Before hundreds of Irish workmen were drawn to Providence, Rhode Island in the 1870s, there were few Catholics in the state. Another important immigrant group was the Portuguese, who were drawn to the fishing industry, and among these, the Cape Verdean subgroup. The uh, origin of the Cape Verdean immigration to the United States started with the whaling ships. The whaling ships would uh, leave this area, stop in Azores and Cape Verde Islands, then they would pick up workers to work on the whales. The first Portuguese parish in the state was established in Providence's Fox Point section in 1885. In 1908, the Holy Ghost Fathers, now known as the Spiritans, came to the newly established St. Anthony's Parish in Portsmouth and added a Portuguese priest to their staff to serve the needs of the Portuguese. Uh, a lot of Cape Verdean community was in St. Anthony in Pawtucket. Uh, they, they used to celebrate that Mass in the basement. Same thing with the community in, in, in um, Brockton. They used to celebrate the ma uh, Mass in the basement of their church, of the church there that was an English priest. But they would bring a, a, like a missionary to, to celebrate Mass. So, um, you know, it, it, is, it, it did start it, uh, like that, but we wanted to have a community so we can be open to uh, celebrate our faith, our culture together in one place. Among the important changes that occurred in the diocese beginning in the 1960s was that Rhode Island was once again experienced the settling of large numbers of immigrants. Not everybody knew how to fish. <laughs> Even though we're from islands, I think, uh, you know, Cape Verdeans are, to me, and, and I've come to realize that even through my history here, my time here, in America, they're very, very smart and adaptive people. The availability of a Portuguese missionary in Cape Verde, Father Jose Maria de Souza, able to speak the Creole of the islands, enabled the bishop, Louis Guilinu, in August of 1974, to create the Immaculate Heart of Mary community. They secured a former synagogue in Pawtucket for use as a church in 1979. Immaculate Heart of Mary is the title of many of the parishes led by Spiritans in the 62 countries where they work. The Congregation of the Holy Spirit under the protection of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is the official name. The Immaculate Heart of Mary Church, serving the Cape Verdean community in Central Falls and Pawtucket, is one of 20 parish missions in the United States run by the Spiritans. And these 12 churches are dedicated to the Virgin Mary. When I came to the U.S., Father Zé Maria de Souza was here in charge, and he worked for many years with my dad in Cape Verde in evangelization in the island of Santiago. So when I came here, automatically came straight to him, and that's how we started. They had a dream. All of them had the dream that one day this parish would have a Cape Verdean Spiritan. And the last one who was here, Father Alindo, was waiting for the group of Cape Verdeans that was newly created to be able to send somebody from Cape Verde here in this parish. The idea for that church was for the Cape Verdeans to concentrate on their own places and meet the, their friends and talk their language and, and feeling home instead of going to churches that they didn't know and the language they didn't know. So that was one of the uh, first things to do about the church, was the center for the Cape Verdean community. And the church became the, 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 the symbol of the Caverians, where they went from, and they started their families and baptized families and, and uh, weddings, all that sort of things. See, when you are from a country where everybody's speaking Caverian, you know, that's your neighbor. But here, our neighbor's Spanish, our neighbor's American, our neighbor's Irish, our neighbor's Italian. You know, the culture of Rhode Island is, is very diverse. So it was interesting 
meeting those cultures and then kind of integrating into those cultures. The history of the Cape Verdean culture is preserved in a nearby museum located in East Providence. It tells the story of how this community came to be. We have um, different types of artifacts and almost everything in this museum has been donated. Very few things were bought. People come and they see something and say, oh, I have something similar, do you want it? <laughs> we never say no. So we're not just recent immigrants. We have been coming and doing things because you know, the, you know, the people who came in the beginning were whalers and the like. You know, so all through the 1800s, people were coming and then they started bringing the families over. So we've been here for a long time and we have proof of that. The need for a church that would serve the Cape Verdean immigrants was a struggle. The tenacity of the people would come through as they approached the bishop. We put the question to the Bishop Jelano. It's over, he's over here in one of these papers that we wanted to start our own church. Uh, the first they told us that there were many churches that we could go to. And we started that. But we insisted that we wanted to start a church. When we found this uh, synagogue, we bought the synagogue because the, the, the Jewish were leaving the place already. And we took the chance of buying the, the, that church and convert it into a Catholic church. You know, there's the, the culture, the Cape Verdean culture, which, we, you know, everybody knows the food, the, the, the dancing, and of course, uh, you know, going to the church, our church community, be, belonging to a family. So I've been here for 16 years and I always was very active in my church in Cape Verde and was, uh, when I was moving here, the bishop and the priest, one of the priests, Padre Zé, which is my godfather, said there's a nice a big Cape Verdean community in Pawtucket, so you can keep doing your what do you do. So I present myself to the church and started working in the church. My mom is one first came over here to look for our best interests. And she called me when I was 19. And since, the, since 19, I've been with the church of he and I adore. I love to be in this church. I enjoy every minute of it. We are growing, we are improving. People are very fond of the church. Everybody does what they have in work, in uh, support to support the church and the priest. So financially, we are not rich, but we are okay. People understand that the church needs money to pay their things. And uh, it seems to me that because it's growing. Parish has gone through some tough changes. Um, beautiful beginning, some rocky moments but we are now headed on the right directions under guidance of Father Juan Batista. Cape Verdeans are generally um, generous people, especially when it comes to um, religion, because we are, I don't know if you know, 90% or better of Cape Verdeans are Catholic. And um, aside from being generous, when it comes to church, we always go the extra mile and we, that's why we're doing so well in this fundraising endeavor. We have a mix of uh, different people from different islands from Cape Verde. Uh, we all have our different voices, different accent. Then we gotta combine them together to harmonize them so we can get uh, what we get. And uh, uh, I do, I do what I can. I feel more, uh, uh, if I go to another parish, I feel like um, an outsider over here. I, uh, I feel like I belong to, so uh, that's 
that's what I uh, appreciate about this parish. I know everything is the same in uh, other church is uh, to uh, is everything they do is to praise God and everything. But over here is both side is the spiritual and the material. So everything seems to be right now. Um, I'm a city teacher at first grade on Saturdays. Sixteen of them. Um, I uh, sing in the choir. I do the readings, and um, I work with the youth as a you know sponsor, counselor, you know whatever you want to call it. And I also participate in um, um, how do you call it? parish counselors. With the Padre Pinto, we get more involved with the church that time. Because now Padre Pinto pick us. You, go, you got to do this, you got to do that. Me, I'm still, of how long this church been, 30 something, I'm still here cleaning the church because Padre Pinto put me in charge of the clean and I was not even at the meeting. So he went to the meeting and he says, you go home, you tell your wife. She's gonna be in charge of the clean of the church. <laughs> so he's the one he's really in charge. I'm gonna do it. I grew up with the, as a family in Cape Verde with my aunt and when I went there I was 12 and when I came here to this church I just feel like home because it's like family. I grew up with Father Alindo and the group in the church until I got married. I'm responsible for the youth group uh, here at Macquarie Head Heart of Mary and I help uh, the priest with uh, here at the Hattery. I'm from Cape Verde, Cape Verde Islands. And specifically, I'm from Brava, the smallest island. Uh, I born in, in Brava, so I came here uh, uh, six years ago. A lot of Cavergian people, they prefer a, a church able to speak their own language. The, uh, the Mass is in Portuguese and English, but the priest talked to them in Creole. That's amazing because the Creole is not the same from island to island. Our, our island, uh, one from the other nine miles, but the Creole is different. For the past 17 years, uh, I've been with uh, Father Alindo, which you always dream of having a good choir, especially a choir that can sing different voices. Because since after I came, that we introduced different voices, because we always sing a traditional song and one voice yeah, for everybody. Then, but to make up a really choir, you need to have a voice. Originally, we only use the organ, which uh, I play the organ. Uh, now, because um, we are Kevorian, we have uh, a lot of uh, African style, uh, which is a little fast. Even though we do a lot of um, uh, European style uh, with solemnities and stuff like that, but when we do our glories or other high rhythms, we do play uh, the drum as well. They have one in English, one uh, they speak in Creole, another in Portuguese. Usually I go Saturday, they speak in Portuguese. Uh, I came here, it was in 1989. And the reason I came is to give my kids uh, opportunity to uh, start. And uh, uh, since over here they have uh, opportunity better than Kilder Island. So whenever uh, I come here, I just feel uh, like at home because the mass is done in the same language and I have uh, opportunity to interact with my uh, uh, with the people from my country so um, I just feel like a home so 
it makes the community get together. It's a, it's a lot of, it's a live community. A lot of people doesn't speak English. Um, a lot of people doesn't understand also Portuguese. So they come to Creole, which they understand the language. And with the music, with the, the Creole speaking, it's easy for them to understand. So it makes it alive. It makes it happy. When you say, you know they say, when you sing, you're praying twice. And I, there's a saying in Portuguese that says, when you sing, you scare away your wolves. So you sing, sometimes you feel like more present with the spirit when you sing and you worship with other members. And by singing, the choir invite the members to sing with them. And I'm sure when they sing, it brightens the spirit. So to have a church without a choir, I think it's a very sad church. They're focusing and bring everybody together, especially Padre Jean Batista, that uh, bring everybody together in the brotherhood and the spirit, because we are one people, we are all one under God. And especially us, Kiver, and we are away from home. Here, the the work they do in this community is keeping us here together. It's almost home away from home. With the kids, with the youth, with the people, the all the parish, the whole community, it's in love with him. The way he teaches, the way he talks, the way he understands. When you call him for help, when you call him to visit people, friends, old people, anytime. For me, ser espiritano. So for me, to be a spiritan is to incarnate from the flesh, the three pillars of work that our fathers taught Pilar de Place. First is to go where the people need the most, where there's a need, and to live with the poorest and the most abandoned, the most forgotten, and be the one that brings the good word of the religion. The second objective is to my second object, goal, is to create a group to be able to evangelize more. Without losing the importance in molding this congregation, Cape Verdean culture, it's a way of not losing a country, but also to evangelize the country. The future of the Immaculate Heart of Mary Church in Rhode Island is bright, with leaders and parishioners working together. You understand better your present and your future if you know your past. It's very important. Everyone should study the roots, the family, say where we came from. My faith is the center, most important thing of my life. Everything comes after. It's my faith that I feel saves me daily. Sobretudo a província portuguesa da congregação que for the Portuguese, we are inviting you to come and visit us, and just we are united by our language. This is the smallest state of the United States, but we invite all Cape Verdean to come and see that this parish is a Cape Verdean parish.